The cemetery. Behind its discreet neighbourhood walls appears was one of the strange and last shelters of dreams and illusions, of that which is different and unknown, of that which is extraordinary and magic. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel, Grey Visitations here. So I'm here today in Killashi Old Graveyard in County Kildare. And I have done a video here before. Uh, I think it was about eight months ago I was here. So Vanessa, one of my viewers, asked me would I be able to come back here and just come in and see what way things are now at the moment. So I'm here with Siobhan, a.k.a. Flame Chef who watches myself and Serenity Sue. So Siobhan kindly came up to meet us here today. She's going to come around with me on this walk today and have a look at these old gravestones. Right guys, so we're going to make our way in to this old graveyard. Now there's a couple of tombs here tabletop tomb there. We'll get back to those and we'll read those. But first of all, we'll go over here where Siobhan and Sue is because there's an interesting one here. And the last time I was here, I put some information over the video about this one. And this is the final resting place here of a barn and a baroness. So I'm going to go inside and just see, can I read some of the inscriptions that's written on the side of it here. So the name on this is Baron de Robeck. And that name, as far as I know, goes back as far as Sweden. And uh, Baron de Robeck is connected to um, Kildare, Dublin as well. And a couple of other places like that. Now, if I get more information, I'll put that over the video. But I, the older video, I will link it under this one. So you have an idea. So as you can see, it's not in great shape. The side is broken open on the tomb. It's kind of like a chest, chest tomb, isn't it? Yeah. So we'll go around. This inscription is actually better on this side. So we'll read this side here. So it's John, sacred to the memory of John Michael Henry Fock, Baron de Robeck, D.L., who died the 30th of September, 1856, and of his wife, Emily Elizabeth, and she's the Baroness de Robeck, and she passed away on the 21st of March, 1859. So she passed away three years after her husband. So it's a very, very interesting one, and I just love all that wrought iron old railing that goes all the way around it there very very old 1800s now as i was saying this graveyard is extremely overgrown and forgotten really and it's sad to see that it's in that state and there's the gate of it there that where you go in so it's all overgrown and there's headstones just over in that direction there's headstones and we'll try and read a couple of those. Some of them we mightn't be able to read. Mm -hmm. We'll do our best. We'll probably go in this way first. And Siobhan is here with me. Siobhan loves the old graveyards. Don't you Siobhan? I love them. I love them. She loves the old graveyards and reading the headstones and she goes around herself and visits different places. So this is erected by Stephen Leahy in memory of his father. And it looks like it could be also Stephen, is it? Yeah. Healy. Who departed this life in August 18, you can see there, 14, aged 90, I think, is it? Yeah. 90 years old. Yeah. Wow. To live until 90 years old yeah. back in the 1800s is very rare isn't it well he would have been born in, in 17 so he would have been born then, he? yeah like very that. early 1700s yeah. 
So we can see the eight, the, the age there, the nine zero, and it has that IHS design on the top. So the moss kind of the moss actually actually preserves a lot of these as well, you know. Now, as I was saying, we're going to try, and I don't expect Siobhan to come in here because it's hard to get into these places. So this is erected to the memory of James Nolan, who departed this life on June the 29th, 1812, aged 40 years old. So these are all 1800s. All these ones here. Now there's a part of the old graveyard here that I didn't actually cover the last time I was here, so I'm going to go in there today. It's the old rune part. And you can just see there in the background, it's the old rune part of the church. The roof has gone off it. Like all these old churches, the roofs are taken off them for tax reasons and insurance and stuff. So, um... We'll probably go around first, what do you think? Yeah. Go around the back? Yeah. We'll go around the back and we'll go just the entrance to the old tower. It's actually an old monastic site. And that's the tower just there and the entrance to go in. So we will go in there. I didn't cover that the last time. So I'm just going to give you a pan around and show you there's more in there you can see all those overgrowth of all those trees there's the barn and baroness just straight ahead that we were looking at they're all in around there hidden away we're going to get in there and read whatever we can um as i was saying there's not many to read in here but we're going to do the best we can around here so it's completely forgotten and we were just talking there saying it's a pity a group doesn't come in and tidy it up like a local committee or you know and tidy it up and cut back all that overgrowth and just bring all those headstones to light it's a shame like you know when you look at that there you would never think there was a baron and baroness buried there there's obviously no families left anymore probably all dead and gone and there's nobody to come to to look after them or so i will go back down i suppose and read this one down here that we we missed the tabletop tomb down here the serenity sue is with me and if you're interested in subscribing to serenity sue check her channel out i'll put the link in underneath the video now here we have a tabletop tomb, so I want to thank Siobhan as well for helping me to clean this one so we can read it. I'll do my best to read this. Erected by Alexander Love Old Town, an unusual name, in memory of his beloved wife, Mrs. Margaret F. Brown who died August 1808 aged I think that says there if I can see 38 years old Margaret was so it was erected by Alexander Love from Old Town this old tabletop tomb and then just beside that then we have this one here Erected by Alexander Love, the same name, Old Town, in memory of his infant son, George Bell, who died the 11th of February, 1866, aged only 17 months. Wow. That's sad. So we have the wife is buried here and I presume the husband is buried here, Alexander um, and Margaret and then you have their infant child and he was only 17 months old in 1866 so I'm sure back in the 1800s 
they, they had a very, very bad health back in the day. They died very young, these children, you know. Mm. There was no medicines like there is now. So, the day it turned out well, didn't it? it did. yeah. The weather is lovely, so we're going to try and go up around where the sun is shining and see what we can find. Right, so this is the back of the old tower, we'll say the back of the old church. And uh, we're just going to have a look out here. As I was saying, I was here before, so I know some of the areas. So I just wanted to come back to do a revisit to show you what way it is now. And it's just really the same, if not worse. Now, this one here is extremely kind of hard to read, isn't it? Who departed this life. You see, all that moss is covering everything. And really, I should have a brush or something that I can brush that off. Um, but some of them are not possible to read. Now, there is a date on that one there. That's 17. 1790. Is it 1790s on that, yeah? So there, that's 1790. Very, very old. Covered over. Forgotten. So this is the back. I'll show you the tower is there. Now, there was a plaque on a wall there somewhere the last time I was here. So the vines have taken over in nature, that area. So it's not visible anymore. We'll read this one. Now, this is erected by Patrick Behan, Black Hall, in memory of his beloved mother, Anne Behan, who died the 13th, I think, of December, 1847. Aged, it's kind of hard to see there. 83. 83 years old. And of his dear father, James, who passed away on the 17th of February, 1867, aged 75 years old. And then you have his brother, John, the 25th of December, Christmas Day, he died, 1872, aged 46. And there's a number of names that go all the way down there, and they're all, some of them are 1886, um, and so on. So that's tough to see Patrick, his brother, passed away on Christmas Day, imagine, in the 1800s. Sad times. So we don't know, we were talking earlier, Siobhan, weren't we, about all this area over here? Yeah. We don't know what's there. Presumed there's more headstones that have to be. It's just far too overgrown to go in. Far too overgrown, yeah. yeah. And they really do need somebody to come in here and clear all that back. Yeah. You know, because it is part of history as well. Like you have that old church there. It's an old monastic site and tower. So it's part of history. And you can just see how far that tower goes up with all the ivy around it there and the growth. Right, so we've come around as far as we could, and this is actually a headstone here, and you'd never think it. So we both took off as much as we could of this old one here. And from what I can gather on it, from reading it, from reading um, this one here, now we tried our best to read this um, here. And the date we got on it is actually, you can see, I don't know if you can see there, 1779, aged 90 years old. Look at that. Someone passed away in 1779. So that would be the year before the rebellion. 70, no, it wouldn't actually. It would be 1798. So it was way before the rebellion. 1779, aged 90 years old. And it's hard to see a name on it. It looks like, it says street. It's probably the address that's on it there. Mm. And it's very hard 
but 1779 age 90 years old so we did do our best to clean that Siobhan <laughs> we've done a good job yeah. right we're in at this one here um, if you can see that yeah. I think it's erected by in memory of Mrs. Catron Cook Daughter. Daughter of, I'll just see, can I get in a bit closer? Daughter of Bartholomew, is it? Hmm. Yeah. Who departed this life the 26th of March, 1815, I think, age 35 years old. So 1815, age 35 years old, and that one there. And that's completely, it's not completely overgrown, but the inscription, you see, the inscription um, lasts and those, they're preserved, aren't they? With the growth and the moss and everything yeah. else. And the shadow of the building, I suppose. The shadows as well, yeah. So we're taking our time going around here. It's very, very dangerous. We're being cautious going around because it's very bad. I've been to graveyards overgrown, but I don't think they were this bad. So there's loads of them around there. We've read that one, I think. That's the oh, barn, yeah. the barn and the baroness. Yeah, the now, Sue. Another one here, like 15 years old. Yeah, is it? Yeah. We'll read this one. Um, no, age 13. Um, James Marshall, in memory of his beloved son Benjamin, who died December the 12th, 1857, age 13 years old. And then we have other names there as well. Um, the, the above it says Mary, who died in December 18 something, 69 maybe, age 56. So there we have James Marshall, in memory of his son Benjamin, who was only 13 years old. He's very, very young. Right guys, so I'm outside the old tower here and church ruins, so I'm going to bring you inside and show you the inside of that because I didn't cover it the last time I was here. So Vanessa, and I can't think of your second name, I will put it over the video, I came back here. We were in the area doing other videos, so I said I was going to pop in here today and Siobhan is coming with us. Siobhan watches our videos. Right guys, so I made my way inside the old tower here and as you can see it's just old pieces of blocks wood falling apart now the interesting part about this tower is this here now i did see a picture online and there was a ladder there like a wooden old ladder and i presume this is the entrance into the old tower back in the day so I'm going to try and show you as much as I can up here. I'm just going to get the torch up there and show you. That is the old stone tower that was adjoined to the church ruin here. Look at that. You can just see straight up all the old stone working it there. So a ladder would have went up there into the next level and then you'd have your I presume you'd have your stairs you know steps going up to the old tower part now the other interesting part about this is this area beside the tower leads it into the old church ruin area and look at this this is just something else so not only do we have an old 1700s abandoned graveyard with those wonderful inscriptions, 
But we also have this church and the roof is taken off like all other churches. They take the roofs off when they're no longer used anymore. And you can see straight ahead there, the window is all blocked up in that. Now I did see something here when I came in on the left. And we have a plaque up here on the wall. So we're going to try and read this plaque. That's on the wall here. Now the sun is shining at this, so I'm going to do my best to read it. Um, in memory of Reverend John Harrison, H.B. Vicar of Bodenstown, and for 32 years, pastor of this church, this tablet was erected by a fond and admiring son. You can see there as a tribute, as a tribute, sorry, of affection. So his son erected this tablet for his father, who was a pastor for 32 years in this church. And you can just see up the top of it there. I'll try and zoom in and show you that design. Look at all those old vines coming down over it there. So you have a little book stone book there and at the very top of that then you have more stone carvings so you can just see there a close-up pasture of the church for 32 years that was erected by his son so how amazing is that guys this old church rune in here and I'm glad I came in here to do this video today just to show you all the overgrown places and I've been to a lot of overgrown graveyard cemeteries in my time and this is just another example of a place that's forgotten in time so that's why I like to do these videos you know to unearth all these places and shed a bit of light on them and hopefully somebody will watch this video and see that this old church and graveyard here is part of history and somebody really needs to come in and try and clean it up um, it's very far from me it's I'm about an hour and a half or more from where I live um, but I would love to see somebody to come along and really do something with it So there is the door entrance of the church. And then, as I was showing you there, we have that old tower entrance into the tower there. That's no longer in use. So all this is very, very old. Now, there is information and online about this tower, so I will put it in the video. And I will also link the old video I did of this graveyard underneath in the description box below if you want to look at that. Right, so we're in a different area of the graveyard. There's no graves I can see over there. Mm. Um, we've just come from that direction, so we're, where we are now is over here. And we're just going to read one here that's in front of us. In loving memory of Geoffrey John Gardner, who died the 7th of July, 1957. So that's not so old, 1957. So could I be it could be the last person to be buried yeah. in the graveyard here. John Gardner, or sorry, Jeffrey Gardner, Jeffrey John Gardner. Now, the last time I was here, for people that haven't seen it before, anyone that's new to the channel, I'm going to bring you down to this really interesting headstone down here and the last time I was here I was telling everyone that there's a headstone in here that was erected by a grieving husband for his wife who passed away very very young and you can just see it straight ahead now I think this is probably the nicest headstone in the graveyard isn't it yeah. You know, with the stonework that went into it. Yeah. 
So the man that erected this headstone was actually a stone cutter himself. Uh, his wife passed away very, very young, so he made this headstone in memory of his wife. So I'm going to show you what it says on it. Now, first of all, I just want to show you the design and the inscriptions that's on the top. We can see the IHS. And just over here, we can see like little angels, cherubs on it there. The cross, like a chalice. And we have the same on this side. Beautiful stonework. Very, very talented man to be able to carve all that stone. So I'll read the inscription. So it says, this stone was erected by Thomas Gahigan. And you can just see it there. Stone cutter of Nace in memory of his beloved wife, Mary Gahigan, who departed this life in October. 18 and it's hard to read the rest of it there but it's 1870 something i think and she was only 23 years old so thomas made this beautiful headstone for his wife you can see the love heart in it there like the sacred heart of jesus in it look at the writing that's on it the style of the writing kind of looks like calligraphy kind of writing on it there and then you have all that design on the other side so it's a beautiful headstone. Amazing. And it's way back here. In the back in the back end of this old graveyard, hidden away. Now we did pull a little bit of ivy off of there to read the inscription because it has overgrown since I was here last. What a beautiful headstone. In memory of his wife, a stone cutter. And I've never come across a headstone that was made especially by a man for his wife. So I'm just going to show you where we're going. Back out. That's Siobhan, a.k.a. Flame Chef. Marker. There's a marker here. So that's what we see, a stone marker just there. And I'm sure there's many, many more underneath all that overgrowth. There's one in there, so I'm going to try and get in there and see. So we found this here. Sue has spotted this one, and it's a lovely cross on it. Design you can see there. Yeah, but it's like the flowers of France, isn't that? You know there. Yeah, I've seen those actually on um, like Esquire's graves and yeah. stuff like that. That cross. So this Lord. is erected. Erected by Thomas Higgins in memory of his beloved wife Mary who departed this life October the 4th 1871 aged 56 years old so that's just another one that's hidden away you know it's out, out away from everything else and it's there's no family left really. It's sad to see that all these graves are left like that and the graveyard itself. And I wouldn't like to think, you know, that when our time comes and we pass away, that we'll be forgotten like this as well. Right guys, that's it from this amazing walk here in this old graveyard. So from me, Grave Visitations and Siobhan, AKA Flame Chef, and Serenity Sue, thanks for coming along, Siobhan, to meet us today. I really enjoyed it. And who knows, we might go on a walk again sometime. Yeah. So, guys, from Killashee Old Graveyard here in County Kildare, this stunning place, I'll leave it at that. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell. And I'll see you all on my next adventure. Take care, but guys, God bless. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.